is up everybody welcome back to another video in today's video we're gonna be talking about the detroit lions defense for 2021 aaron glenn loves the versatility for this defense and the players that are here but i think there's a rookie that could be the lions x factor this season and if not i think he's in the perfect the ideal situation so let's get it started we're, up, we're gonna bite a kneecap off and we're gonna stand up and then it's gonna take two more shots to knock us down and on the way up we're gonna take your other kneecap and we're gonna get up and then it's gonna take three shots to get us down and when we do we're gonna take another hunk out of you before before long we're the, gonna be the last one standing Welcome everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here. Just talking a little bit about the Detroit Lions defense for this upcoming season. Specifically one player, but a little bit of the entire defense as well. So recently, Aaron Glenn spoke to the Detroit Lions media. And he talked about the Lions defense, of course, being our new defensive coordinator. And he really talked about the versatility of this Lions defense. Now, you remember with our last regime, it was all about versatility. Every player they brought in, the whole idea was they were versatile. They could play multiple positions. Heck, we just did a video on Jelani Tobias, and we talked about his versatility, right? So, I mean, that's what it was all about. And Aaron Glenn said that he loves versatility. He credited the last coaching staff for the versatile pieces that are here. And there's a lot of them. Specifically speaking of Jamie Collins, how he can use Jamie Collins in so many different ways. He could put him at the inside linebacker position, play stack linebacker. He could put him out on the edge like an outside linebacker, possibly on the strong side to help cover tight ends. Heck, he can line him up over the center on passing downs and allow him to go against some interior offensive linemen as a pass rusher. We've seen all of that from Jamie Callen's game but he also brought up a rookie now this rookie is someone that after I did the draft video where I broke down his film I was like man this might be my favorite draft pick like this might be my favorite draft pick after watching the film and that is Ifiatu Melifanwu. No, nope. I know I'm saying it wrong, so we're just gonna stick with Ify. Some people call him Ify. I was calling him Melly. I think Melly sounds cool. Melly, Melly. Oh, Mary, man. I don't know, but we're gonna call him Ify for this video because that's what Aaron Glenn was calling him. So Ify, he was talking a little bit about Ify, and he talked about the versatility that Ify has for the Detroit Lions. You can do a number of things with him. He could play on the outside, obviously as an outside cornerback, which is what he did back at Syracuse. He could play the deep position. He could also play on the inside. Love the versatility of those two guys, and we know that. When Melifon was drafted, I mean, that was as clear as day as how many different things that he could do. And Brad Holmes brought it up right away that, you know, I'm going to leave it to Aaron Glenn, but we think there's a lot of things that that guy can do. You know, Aaron Glenn's going to get to make the decisions on where he plays because he's a defense coordinator, which I love, by the way. But he's also like, hey, I believe he can do a lot of different things. And I think he can. Now, with Syracuse, he pretty much just played the outside cornerback position because he was their top cornerback, which makes sense. He's your top corner. There's no need to move him. Let's play him as their top corner. And that background is going to be very beneficial for him. But at his size, with his speed, there's so many different things that he could do. And I think he's in the ideal situation for the Lions this season to not only help this year, but also develop for the future the right way. Standing at six foot two and a half, some people label him at six foot three, 205 pounds. He has a great size. That's a fantastic size size for an outside corner extremely long huge wingspan long arms over 32 inches that's longer than some of our tackles that is super long great wingspan which is very beneficial as an outside cornerback especially at the point of attack but that also helps him be versatile from the safety position coming down making plays on the football attacking through the body of a receiver but also that size as a tackler i mean he is a vicious tackler on the outside when you watch him this guy wants to tackle and he attacks blockers He's not going to get pushed out of play. He's like, oh, you try to block me? Okay, I'm going to throw you on the ground. He goes at blockers. So wide receiver screens, he tries to blow those up. But then you look at his relative athletic score. And it's not only the size, it's also then the speed. He has really good speed for his size. Running a sub 4 five forty. Good speed. It's long speed. You can watch him on film. He can turn and run with some of the faster receivers. Played against some good competition at Syracuse with the conference that they are in. But he's got good speed. He also has a fantastic tenure split that was in the 91st percentile, which is kind of crazy. So he absolutely has the burst and you can see that on film a 41 and a half inch vertical i'm sure he could dunk a basketball the guy is just physically so gifted all right so gifted agility numbers weren't the best but he's a very gifted player he was given a 9.57 relative athletic score he's just got the size and he's got the speed combination that's kind of rare especially for an outside cornerback but here's why i love the situation that he's in we did the film video we broke it down so if you guys want to check that out and you guys want to see plays things like that you can go check that out and we break down how he is as a cornerback and he could easily be lions cornerback this season but i love the situation that he's in for the detroit lions let's go back to what the new orleans saints did with aaron glenn now they ran a 4-2-5 defense the lions 
aren't running a 4-2-5 here, at least not as their base defense. It's going to be a 3-4 base defense is what the Lions told us. But obviously there's multiple fronts out of it. I mean, you could one gap, you could two gap. You could make it look like a 4-3. You could run 3-3-5 sets. There's so many different things you could do out of it. And the Lions have already talked on so many different things they could throw together. They're obviously talking about the versatility. There's a lot of things you could do here, right? You could put three big defensive linemen out there. You could line it up so you can kind of slide inside, make it look like a 4-3 defense. There's so many different things you could run out of a 3-4, right? The defensive line, he's been very impressed with the size that they have, specifically for those interior defensive line, the 3-4 defense. I'm talking about the guys that are on the line, hands in the dirt. Defensive end, defensive tackle, or nose tackle, defensive end. I think Trey Flowers, the outside linebacker, moving Romeo to outside linebacker. So we're talking about the big guys on the defensive line. Michael Brockers, Ali McNeil, John Penasini, Levi. I mean, we're talking about the big dudes. And he said this, he really likes the size, but he feels like that size. Because those big guys, they can kind of just clog up the run lanes, clog up blockers, take up a lot of space, and open up guys like Trey Flowers, Romeo, allow them to use more of their athleticism. And that's exactly what I think it's going to do with Austin Bryant and Julian Okora. So I love those two fits because Austin Bryant hasn't done great on the line. Julian Okora with his size and his speed, I think he'd be fantastic out in space, not necessarily right against the tackle, but it's going to be interesting to see how that goes for Trey Flowers and Romeo. Kind of new for those guys a little bit, but there is athleticism, right? We've seen these guys drop in the flat. It's going to be interesting to see how this makes them play being in space. We've seen them kind of dabble in it a few times, try it out, but this could lead to some big things. Like I said, the first off, just having them both on the field at the same time is going to be exciting. But secondly, the fact that they're going to both be free. And then you have the defensive line. So you have these big dudes clogging up lanes, opening up these pass rushers on the ends. Now, when he says clogging up blockers, it could mean one gap attacking downhill, but I think there's versatility there. Because of their size, they can two gap. They can take on two gaps of an offensive lineman, hold their ground, and open up linebackers. Open up Derek Barnes, open up Alex Anzalone, open up Jelani Tabai, open up all these linebackers. You know, that's kind of the goal of a two gap, open it up for the linebackers. Meanwhile, one gap explosive, get downhill. Guys are responsible for only one gap. I think there's versatility there and recently releasing John Cap John Atkins I think there's versatility there because these big dudes are also explosive it's not easy to find but it's what the Lions have been going after Aaron Glenn wants more speed defensively everywhere he just wants more speed simple as that and the Detroit Lions this has been one of their most athletic drafts they've had in a long time if you go by RAS scores by every pick it's one of the most athletic drafts we've had in a long time Lions are making a push for athleticism in the defense, speed in the defense, ability to get to the quarterback of the defense, okay? They're valuing size on the defensive line to open up other players and that speed. Neil's explosive at his size. Levi is crazy explosive, pushing 300 pounds, which is impressive. But their size, like think about it. He brings up John Penasini, which is good for Penasini because it definitely sounds like he makes roster. But if you put Brocker as Penasini and you had Levi or Aleem or something like that on the field at the same time, that's a lot of size. But the thing is, you don't lack explosiveness still. You still have a lot of size though. All those guys can two gap, open up Romeo, open up Trey. Now you got speed everywhere. And these guys aren't getting blocked right off the point of attack. They have ability to just move around, play free. And then when he's talking about stack linebackers, they're able to stack behind some of these defensive linemen, open them up. And that's when they start racking up stats. That's what the exciting part of this defense is. An extra defensive back on the field. And that usually was a safety. They'd put an extra safety out there. Sometimes they put an extra corner. But that's where I think Melifonwu could actually shine is playing somewhat of that role. See, what I like is where the Lions are right now at the cornerback position first off. All right, we know that the cornerback position, we saw it last year with Jeff Okuda, is... One of the toughest positions in the NFL to translate from college to the NFL is really tough. And last season, the idea was when we signed Desmond Trufant that, okay, Jeff will get time to develop because he won't have to be thrown in there. That didn't happen. Desmond Trufant dealt with injuries, and even when he was out there, he didn't play great. So Okuda was just thrown right into the fire. Heck, he was dealing with injuries to begin the season. He was thrown into fire, and it was just a mess. But for Melifonwu, when you look at the Lions cornerback group and what they have, the idea here is that he won't be forced into that. He should not be forced into that role. Having Jeff Okuda and Amani Oruwari returning, those are kind of the two cornerbacks of the future, we believe, right? Those are the two guys for the future. Obviously, Imani has some things to prove. Definitely Jeff Okuda, but the thing is, year two for cornerbacks is usually a really good year. Now with a good coaching staff, I expect the jump out of both of those guys. So you have the top two corners that are probably going to be above Melifon, who at least heading into the season. Then you sign Cornelder at the slot position. The thing about Cornelder that's great is he tackles really well. We'll get into that. But then you have a fourth cornerback that should be ahead of Melifon, who, like if I was projecting, I would put him ahead of Iffy, and that is Quinn Dunn. Quinn Dunbar, who was signed this offseason. Now, if Quinn Dunbar can get back anywhere near his 2019 form, anywhere near his form before the injury last season with Seattle, he had surgery for that. If he gets back anywhere near that, because last year was not playing healthy, we did a film video on him, he was one of the top corners in the league as a number two cornerback. One of the best in the NFL, one of the best in football. 
And having those four guys allows Melifonwu to not be thrown into the fire. Even if there's an injury, ready? If he's balling out, yeah, you play him at cornerback. But there's a very good chance that he's probably going to have his lumps like a lot of young cornerbacks do. So having that depth above is great. And of course, you can't forget Michael Ford. Now, the Lions, honestly, they could sign another bet if they wanted to. But you have Michael Ford. So you have depth here where Melly does not have to be forced into a role, especially if those guys step up, which is great for him, his transition from college to the NFL. But this is why I like this situation. That's a great situation for him we know this is going to be a big year for tracy walker and will harris more even more for tracy walker but this is a big year for these guys new dc new secondary coach you're hoping they take the jump forward they're young guys but this is for them to really prove themselves that they're going to be the safeties of the future for the detroit Lions. so i expect them to get a lot of reps look last year tracy walker really struggled defensively for the detroit Lions, right it was a bad year for tracy and tracy was great in his first two years which is why it stunk so much that he took a step back but there's got to be reasoning behind that and i think there is think about the Lions did they signed Duran Harmon. Right? And they were trying to win right away, so they went out and they got Duran Harmon. Actually, they traded for Duran Harmon. And what that ultimately did is it pushed Tracy Walker out of the free safety role. Not to say that he never played free safety, but it pushed him out of that because that's all Duran Harmon did. Made it so Duran Harmon played nearly every snap. This is the most snaps Duran Harmon's ever taken in his career. He took over 1,100 snaps of the Lions last season, 98% of the snaps. One thing, he was healthy, but he played almost every snap at free safety, which forced guys like Tracy Walker because Harmon wasn't going to play strong, soft, strong safety. He can't do that. It made guys like Walker have to adjust. And I think that's why we saw early in the year, there was some indecision there. The Lions really weren't sure what they had, right? They weren't sure what they had. Who was better, Will or Walker? Who's better at strong safety? I don't know. And that's why people were like, wait, why is Will playing more than Walker? Because Walker was going to strong safety. In his first couple of years, he was the free safety. Now that Deron Harmon's gone and the Detroit Lions signed Dean Marlowe, Marlowe could play that role, but I don't think he started over Walker. This allows Walker to go back to that free safety role in a split safety look to bounce between deep, to bounce into the box, to give you best of both worlds, what we've seen with the Rams, what we've seen with the Saints. And this is what Aaron Glenn said. He, he praised himself a little bit. Like, hey, go look at the Saints stats a little bit. Look at what some of those safeties have done. Every year you're seeing four or five picks, right? Look at Malcolm Jenkins had his best season in years with the Saints. You know, hey, I was doing, I did that, okay? They had the best year with me. We get after it. Tracy Walker has every day after practice, he gets in there and he watches film. He said, who wouldn't want to watch film? He didn't say anything about Will, but he said, who wouldn't want to watch film in this kind of scheme for safeties? Because it's a lot to take in apparently, but also we know it leads to great production. That's my point. Like Aubrey Pleasant, Aaron Glenn, what they've done with safeties. And the fact that it's not two different things, Aaron Glenn and Aubrey Pleasant being on the same wavelength of, hey, we run split safety sets, same type of safety looks, but we both know how to develop guys. We both know outstanding things. Marcus Williams, Malcolm Jenkins, you know, what you did with John Johnson, what you do with these fantastic players and the numbers that they put up. That's the excitement for Tracy Walker. And that means you have your safeties, right? We question, what do we have? We don't know what we have as Walker. The issue with Will is he's not that he's not quick. It's just that he's too small. He's six foot one. He can't keep up with a six, six tight end. It's just an impossible match for him. But the thing is, Melifonu can. And with how many three safety sets we're going to see, that's why Aaron Glenn keeps bringing up Melifonu because he's going to be able to do those things. Hey, Will can play in the box, be that tackler, be the extra linebacker on passing downs, you know, that kind of thing. Bring more speed to the defense. Cover in certain occasions we need to. Drop in his zone because of his speed. Tracy can get back to that more free safety role, but they can split back and forth because they've both done it, right? They both have experience doing it, but Walker being more of the full-time free safety is when he's been at his best. He's been one of the elite safeties in the league. We thought this guy was going to be a baller last year, but it didn't happen. And I think because of Harmon, it took away that role. But now Melifonwu can be the extra. Melifonwu can be our J. Ron Curse. Look at the Lions season statistically. 2019 versus 2020 with the addition of J. Ron Curse. Right. And this was Tracy Walker, you know, trying to place from that strong safety role, which he can, right? We know that he can now that he has experience under his belt, but he's been really good at free safety. But this is how big J Ron was the addition with and without defense that was terrible against tight ends. And teams knew going into 2020, attack him with tight ends because they can't stop him. In 2019, they allowed 80 receptions for 890 yards against tight ends. Turn around to 2020, 62 receptions for 688 yards. Now, what went up? touchdowns, okay? Inconsistencies of Jaron Curse being on the field and Walker still being outsized in red zone situations where you could just throw up and go get it. But for the most part, tight end production went way down. And that's where Melifonwu's role is going to come in place because he gives you best of both roles. He not only can cover tight ends with quickness, he also can make plays at the point of attack. It allows Walker to get back to his natural role, which should make him better. And Will Harris kind of gets to play some that box role, more of a linebacker. I mean, that's what he is. He's a big hitter. Now, this should also mean big things for a guy like Tracy Walker, as going to this new scheme with the Detroit Lions should fit his strengths. And again, it can allow guys like Melifonwu to thrive, kind of playing as that extra defensive back. But for a guy like Tracy Walker for a second, let's get into that, right? Deron Harmon comes in, so he takes the free safety role. And because of that, Tracy Walker, a guy that came in being kind of the free safety, single high deep safety when they went to that, he has that kind of range. He has the length. 
length. All right, he has some burst, so he could do that. And that's what he came and he was for the Detroit Lions. But then with the addition of Daron Harmon, slowly it stopped becoming his role. And he struggled a little bit more and more. And then last season, we saw him not record a single interception for the first time. Now his tackles were good because he played the most in the box that he's ever played. And he played the most at corner that he's ever played. And if you know Tracy Walker, if you've watched his film, he's not great at that. While he has good length, good size for tight ends, he doesn't really have the feet in man coverage. You can just see it. He just struggles to keep and connect with guys. It doesn't seem like that's his upside. His length, his range, and his upside is a free safety. And he's going to get to go back to that role. Melifon will get, will get to play maybe some of that Tracy Walker type of role because now a guy like Tracy Walker gets to play that free safety role. He could play that role. And his background being a corner means he has those kind of feet to stay in front of players while also having the length. Tracy Walker is going to be now playing in the defense that he played at back in college, a split zone scheme. So it's going to be an opportunity for him to not always have to cover as much ground, but still get to play the free safety side of the field and get back to where he played at his best. And of course, if he's asked to slide down, he's has experience doing it, but that's not where you primarily want him. And for a guy like Will Harris, I feel like, I still feel like his upside is as a strong safety. He's got more speed than Tracy Walker. He's a little bit lighter on his toes and his stats aren't that bad in man-to-man -man coverage. And Melifon will also give you not only, hey, I can cover tight ends, but what about those big receivers, the big slots, right? We talk about all the time, Lions having a big slot. Cooper Cup, who covers Cooper Cup? The guy's not super fast and shifty, but he's six foot three. He's tough for slot corners. They're five foot nine, five foot ten. Like, who is this dude, right? But for Melifonwu, that's like an outside receiver for him. It's not quickness that really is going to be tough for him because he's like, hey, I'm used to covering these guys. And he's got the size to match up. So big slots, Melifonwu. Like, you now have an option that other teams don't have. When they find big slots, they're like, okay, do we go safety? Do we go linebacker? What do we do here? Lions say Melifon. Don't believe me, just look at what Tracy Walker said about the new scheme for the Detroit Lions. He said, I'm blessed to be in the scheme, the little things that they taught me, but also it goes back right to his college days, so he's familiar, but he's like, I'm blessed to be able to play freely and basically play where I'm the most comfortable, right? I was uncomfortable when you brought in Daron Harmon, and I get it, right? Matt Patricia's dude, he brought in Harmon. Okay, we're going to give some help. He thought that the transition would be smoother than it was, and it wasn't. It stinks. He had to win. So he's like trying to pull every string to win right away. But for the Detroit Lions, now they can kind of take a step back and say, okay, we see the film. We can clearly see where you're good and where you're not good. Let's just put you where you're good. How am I going to match up with the tight end? Think about Atlanta for a second with Kyle Pitts. Teams are going to struggle. How do we match up with this guy? That's where Melifonwu's ability is going to show up. It's like, oh, we have a guy that can do that. But here's where Melly has an advantage over J. Ron Kurtz. His advantage over J. Ron is he is a cornerback playing that role, not the other way around. He's not a safety playing that role. So his advantage is, hey, I do this. I cover guys man-to-man -man all the time. Plus, I can slide out and cover a receiver if I was needed to. The biggest question for him will be covering slot receivers. That's something that he didn't do in college, and I think he struggled a little bit. Probably his biggest weakness is coverage. You can go check out the film video. Video it's Short area, some of that quickness, right off the line of scrimmage, getting some separation early. I think he can start with that, which could lead to some struggles against slots. So he's going to have to play that physical, but his length should help him. But he's going to have to play a little physical there. However, I do think his balance is really good. We know he has that top end speed to keep up with guys. A guy like Will Harris has definitely taken his lump. He's had, had terrible coverage stats. But for him, he's taking lumps as a tackler. He's had missed tackle issues. And that's another reason why they went with Walker over Will for that kind of role. He's had missed tackle issues. His coverage hasn't always been the best. He's had his lumps for sure. And I think it's a big reason why the Lions signed Dean Marlowe. They're like, okay, let's bring in one year competition for this guy and kind of make our decision. Where are we going with this for the future? So it's going to be important for Will. But I think going to a split safety scheme could be good for him. He's always had the interchangeable ability where he's played the deep safety position because he's fast. He's extremely fast, got really nice range. He needs to improve when you talk about schemes specifically you're gonna run a lot of three safety sets it could put him more at the strong safety role less man-to-man -man coverage assignments i'm gonna be more of a pure split safety and have melifanu maybe play a little bit more in the box because to me when i watch dean marlow i feel like dean marlow is a really good box tackler so if melifanu struggles a little bit there he could be rotational with him or if you're going three safeties you want more of a tackler on the field marlow's kind of more of that to me as a defensive back but man-to-man -man coverage, you're definitely going Melifonu because Dean Marlowe really struggles in man-to-man -man coverage. So everybody kind of has their own little role, right? Everybody kind of has their, okay, here's what I'm good at. Melifonu should be better in man coverage than the other guys. You know, Dean Marlowe, not great in man coverage, but he can play deep safety and he's better in the box as a tackler. Probably than what Melifonu was going to be, I think. And you look at a guy like Walker and Will, more split safety looks, could be very beneficial for both of these players. And we'll see what it does for Will, but I know it will be for Tracy. That's why you have those guys. You have a slot. He's not your slot corner. But he can kind of do all of the different things based on who you're going against. If it's a tight end you're worried about, you can throw him on that. And then Aaron Glenn talks about his ability to play deep. 
he could drop into coverage. See, his speed, that long speed he has, he could play a safety position if you want him to. I know he hasn't done it before, so it would still be new to him, but he could do it. He played both zone and he played both man coverage. He's familiar with both. And my favorite part of his game was him shooting down on routes. At the safety spot, he could do the same thing, but then he has that deep speed to turn and run with some of the fastest receivers out there. So his talent, his skill set is going to allow him to do a, different, a lot of different things. And I think the fact that his background is cornerback and he did it really well is what's going to be so huge for him. I think this even goes back to the whole premise of the video is that he's not going to be forced into anything. You don't even have to force him into a deep safety or a safety role, you know, playing a split safety set because that's why you got Dean Marlowe. Because Marlo can do that. He's had experience doing it. Will's done it. Walker's done it. You got three guys that have done it. And of course, you have your UDFAs. I'm just not counting them right now. But you have guys that have done it. Melifon was never done it. So he could try it. But if he struggles there, you don't have to make him do that. So you are you kind of know he can cover, right? So you know he can play cornerback. My point is, you can just kind of see where does he fit best. This is where we'll play him by game. That's what an X Factor is. An X Factor is a player that changes the game and can specifically do it in different ways based on how the game's going. You know, be that guy that other teams maybe don't have that can change the outcome. Then as his career goes on, as yours goes on, as time goes on, as he develops, then he could start to become more of the cornerback guy, right? Quentin Dunbar is a one-year deal. Michael Ford's a one-year deal. So after this season, he gets a year, he's kind of in and out. Maybe he plays some cornerback reps and not all of them. Maybe he plays some of that role, some of that unicorn, you know, safety, linebacker, different type of role. And then next year, he'll be more comfortable to be in second year in the league. And that's when you take a big jump. And then he could be more of a full-time cornerback when Dunbar's no longer here, when Mike Ford's no longer here. Kind of some of those stopgap guys. Then he could play a little bit more of that role. But my point is, is that this is really good for him year one because I think it's not throwing him to a fire where players usually struggle at the cornerback spot. I think it allows him to be versatile. If he does well at the corner, great playing. Him there but if he struggles or if it's tough transition the lions have the guys to do it now you can kind of just move him in and out give him some experience it doesn't have to be an all-down player but in certain situations you have that guy and you know you need to have guys that can help on weird matchups like tight ends the lions are going to be a matchup team on offense they know what's going to come right back on them on offense so melifonwu his ability playing cornerback and now his ability to slide inside is going to be huge and also let's talk about him as a tackler Okay, as a tackler, he's going to rack up tackles. He's blocking me. I'm getting pushed out play. No, he attacks blockers, but also as well as he attacks blockers, you know, blowing up screens with his size and his length. He's also a big hitter. Sometimes tackling for him isn't the prettiest, but he is a pretty big hitter. There's nothing that he should be forced into this year. And I think that's what fits him so well is that he shouldn't be forced into anything. He's kind of our own like unicorn player that could be an X factor this year. Just like J-Run was such a big help against tight ends, I feel like he could do the same thing. But also as time goes on, as he develops, he can expand his role. But the fact is he shouldn't be forced into anything. And I think that is what's so good for Malafano is that he won't be forced into anything. If he's ready to dominate a corner, boom, do it. He has all these traits that can play at different spots long speed balance he's light on his feet go watch my film video he's a vicious tackler he tacks blocks you know he's not going to sit back and let people block him out of a play all these little things help and then i think the length is what uh, brad holmes touched on he was looking for length he's got it and that length is huge against tight ends point of attack it's huge against some of those receivers underneath just making plays on the football you know some of those zone breaks are going to have to improve a little bit depending on what the lines decide to do with safety then it's about the young guys it's about the young guys that are going to step up for the future melifon who has an opportunity to just kind of be that unicorn for the lions play when you feel like he's ready Give him time when you feel like he's ready and give him experience at different roles. The whole point of this offseason was we don't want needs. We want to develop these players. And the Lions realize, hey, corner takes a while to develop. So if we do what we do this offseason with Dunbar, with Ford, with Okuda, with Monty Cornelder, he doesn't need to be forced into any of these tough roles. If he's ready for it, cool, he can take it. But if not, let's not force him there. We play our best. Then he can develop. I think that's what's awesome for Melifonu. I think he's in a great situation to be successful. And I think he could be an X factor in certain games. You know, not every game, but certain games he could be an X factor for the Lions because he could do so many different things. He could probably blitz as well. But at the same time, it should be great for his development. Let me know your thoughts, comments below. Thank you for watching. And I'm out.